Today, I'm joined by Sebastian Schaefer, and this is unlike any episode I've really recorded before. There was no real agenda for this. Uh, Sebastian is not trying to pitch or sell anything. He happens to have a premium link building service, but we hardly touch on that. What we do talk about is some of the most interesting topics I've covered before on Systemize Your Success. That's, that is all about systems, funnily enough, but this is talking about systems in a slightly different angle. The why behind systems, like what is it that we're trying to do by systemizing our business? Businesses. What do systems provide for us? Do they give us opportunities? Do they give us freedom? What's the difference between those two things? And also how systems can help us to be better leaders for our companies, for our staff, to give us the time and the headspace to be a better coach and actually to facilitate that happening. And also how to use systems in a way to be able to get our culture and our values to actually permeate through our organization after we sort of elevate ourselves up. And lastly, we touch a lot on mental health. This is something that's important to, to Sebastian. It's something that's important to me. It's a history of being a doctor. And it's something that I think we don't talk about enough. And I'm really glad the subject went there as it opened up the, our conversation into an area which I've not really discussed before on the show. So this was an absolute pleasure to record. I really hope you enjoy listening to this as much as I did recording it. So the question is this, how do entrepreneurs like us who don't have an endless supply of cash, how do we leverage the best apps, virtual assistants, automation tools and systems to scale our businesses, increase our profits and have more time to do what we love to do each day? That is the question and this podcast will give you the answer. My name is Dr. Steve Day and this is Systemize Your Success. Hey Sebastian, great to have you on the show today. So just give us a two minute whistle stop history of you know, what brought you here what is your business about and you know what are you hoping to chat about today on this podcast yeah first of all thanks for having me um i'm seb um i'm in berlin 39 um i run like one day or two days a week i run a premium link building agency called dofollow.io um we do link building which is a sub part of seo search engine optimization um, for our clients mainly b2b clients um, yeah, that's what I do um, two days a week. Um, my background is not entrepreneurial at all. Um, maybe that's interesting to know. I had very normal jobs. I grew up in a very normal family. No one was an entrepreneur. I didn't sell lemonade when I was young. Um, I worked the first eight to 10 years in, in startups um, here in, in Germany uh, and enjoyed it quite a bit. Um, the last last year in my I co-founded a startup um, nine years ago that led to a lot of frustration um, just because, mainly because of direction and uh, not having the freedom to make my own decisions um, and that's when I quit and I started my own entrepreneurial journey and which led me to where I am today um, learned a lot about systems structuring uh, a company um, scaling a company so yeah it's a, it was an interesting journey all right cool well, no, I'm, I'm excited to speak. To, I'm ex being excited, I should say, to speak to you today because um, it's always good speaking to to like-minded people or people who share a passion in systems. And but I love the angle that we talked talk just before uh, we came on on camera or mic, so to speak. And we we're talking about some of the the, the more philosophical stuff. And I think we can even start there rather than sort of waiting and getting there later because I think it's really interesting. And I think we'll we'll open up some interesting conversations as a result. And one of the things you you mentioned, which is the why and the why behind the systems, why behind creating the time. And and that all that piqued my interest because it's something that I really struggle with in the early days. I mean, I've been, I was quite the opposite to you. I started my entrepreneurial journey when I was seven and I've had all sorts of businesses over the years and I've always gone back to it and then tried normal career as a doctor and then got fed up with that and came back to business because it's where my passion lies. So Coming, coming from this from a different angle, and that's why I think this will be an interesting one to hear your take on it. So, so from your side, like, what is it for you? What is the the why about systems? And why? What's the interest in them? And yeah, what do you? Where do you think they're going to take you? And why? Yeah, I think it's a it's a really good question, um, and it's something I've been thinking about a lot, and I've also changed my mind quite a lot about this over the last few years mainly because I didn't have a lot of awareness why I was doing the things I was doing. And I think it's a, it's a very normal place to be. It, it's especially when you have a, a job or when you're like an early stage entrepreneur, you have a lot of stuff you need to do. So it's more, you're focused more on, okay, how can I survive the day? Um, then, okay, what's the big picture here? Um, but for me, what I've realized over the years, 
the early days of my entrepreneurial journey were mostly driven by pain. I was trying to get away from something, right? I was trying to get build freedom for myself, not having someone telling me what to do and like giving me a framework and how to how to operate um, with it, right? Um, that I think was the main um, main motivation in the early days, and that has shifted. So I'm I'm shifting away from freedom to what I would call awareness and optionality, right? Because freedom and that, that might sound like semantics to to some people, um, but to me the difference is freedom is kind of disconnected from everything, right? No one is bothering you in in any way, and what I'm shifting towards is more making conscious commitments, but having the options to do whatever I want if I want to break out, right? So I don't want to be that independent person just floating along uh, in, in life, right? I want to commit to certain things, but I want to have the options to do whatever I want. And that, to me, gives me a very solid foundation to just design life uh, however I want it to be. And things change, right? My, my values change, my focus changes, my interests change. Um, so I just want to have optionality to, to react to whatever I find interesting. Um, and that might change with family or just different environments. Um, but optionality is really what I'm optimizing for. Yeah, yeah no, I like that, that angle on it because I, I agree with it completely in that for me, when people talk about food, and I, you know, one of the things I talk about is freeing yourself on the day-to-day -day grind and creating time and headspace in your business. And that's why I am a massive, massive believer in in systems, in getting people to help you and and getting people in that early days often over that mindset shift of either I've got to do it all myself or no one can do it as good as me or all those fears that people have, or they're going to do it wrong. It's going to be my name. you know, It's going to be it's put, put through the gutters or whatever. And um, so I help with all that, but then going beyond that is the reality that actually, even if you stay in the same business, rather than sort of thinking about really broad options of I can do anything now, is like the, the options you have in your business when you create the time and headspace become infinite as well. And I am probably in many ways busier than I've ever been in my business now. And your business, you know, just because I've systemized the hell out of mo a lot, most of the operational stuff, it just means there's more stuff I can now do. And so the options for me have got wider and broader. And if I wasn't careful, I could just keep on doing and thinking about and creating new stuff. It's just the the type of work I now do is radically changed from what it was. It's it's no longer the in your business stuff for the cliche phrase. It's more the on your business stuff. And um, I think for me, the, 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 the joy of systems is to allow me to focus on the stuff that I genuinely enjoy doing. And the stuff that I think I can add the most value to my business through. And we talked about this again, actually, just before we came on. It's also given me the opportunity to spend a lot more time on leadership and on coaching and on mentoring my staff, on helping them become the best versions of themselves. Um, and that for me is a huge, like when you talk about the why you do something, for me, a lot of, a big part of the building a bigger business isn't just about, you know, being wealthier and having status and all that. It's actually about being able to, to nurture people and, and, and help them along their journeys. And I know this is something that you're also passionate about. So I'd love to hear your take on, on that side of things. Yeah, absolutely. I think the interesting thing to stay in the context of systems, right, is to see ourselves as systems. And we are probably the most challenging systems to figure out and, and to, to influence, right? Because we have a lot of conditioning from childhood. We have certain political views, worldviews that, that are influenced by friends and the environment we are in. And oftentimes we don't look at that system as much as we look at uh, company systems, right? Okay, I can write SOPs, but when have you ever written an SOP for yourself, right? When have you ever really looked at, okay, that's the process that I'm usually taking to do something. Is that what I want to do? Is that actually the process? Is that even the end result that I'm optimizing for here? Or should I maybe change the end result, right? Uh, and I think really getting into understanding yourself and then transporting that to maybe coaching and mentoring. So um, the, the leaders in your company have the same mindset. That is super important. And it kind of counterbalances balance, the, the systems you can put in place, like SOPs and whatnot. Because if you work with the people to to elevate their awareness, their understanding their own patterns and how that influences the whole culture and how other people on the team react to that. That is something that can create even stronger, a stronger foundation. So it kind of really 
combines the strength of like having the outside systems of SOPs and automations, and then the the awareness and the leadership skills of, of your team uh, that just reinforces and helps the company to grow. Right. Uh, so I think we should never we shouldn't disconnect the two. Um, it's just so much more fun to look at uh, apps and automations and uh, and and geek out uh, geek out on that stuff um, because it's super valuable. Um, but I, I think ultimately the internal systems will lead to first of all a stronger company culture but also just a happier life because you will become more aware of what you actually want to do and you can influence your own decisions and your path in life and the direction you're taking and i think that's super important yeah no oh, very very interesting um something you picked up something you said i want to pick up on which is um about building the culture within the business and about being not disconnecting the people, the, the 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 actual the people and who they are from the actual system side of stuff, because it can be if you are a total systems geek like me, then there is that trap that you can fall into of just basically putting almost like a rule to everything. And there's a there's a good in that in that you get consistency, but you also there's that possibility that you stifle the the ability for people to actually be creative and to actually add huge amounts of value. And there's a great book, a great book, sorry, by um, Seth Godin called poke the box, mm -hmm. which is all about actually, if you're an employee or an entrepreneur, or whatever, it's like just testing new ideas and failing forward. And just like, you know, the more you just have a go, the more valuable you become um, as long as you learn from your mistakes, obviously. And um, so from, but but I do have a systems head on me, and so what I always try to to think about is is how how can I as a leader as I grow my business, and and I'm not at the stage now where I'm trying to just replace myself as CEO just yet, but at some point I will, and but I will want my company vision, my values, my culture, the things that I really stand for, and that will have will have built the com company up to that point to to still propagate through my staff, through the leadership levels of the business. And so there has to be some element of systems in my head, the way I think about it now, um, there has to be some element of a systemized approach to what you allow people to do, to not do, what, what people can actually try out, what they can't, that, and, and, and how do you actually, I guess, systemize the culture of the business, if that's even possible. And look looked at, yeah, what, what your take on, on that sort of side of things? Yeah, I, I totally agree. I think that's probably one of the biggest challenges and something I'm still figuring out. I'm still quite, quite early in the journey. But the, the way I think about it and also how it relates to, to SOPs and so on, but SOPs, the more specific they get, the more you take away ownership from someone, right? And sometimes that might be the right thing to do because they're not trained enough um, and they, they need that guidance, fair enough. But usually what I'm finding in, in like day-to-day -day work is to optimize more on like around the outcomes, right? To, to build structures around the expected outcome and then leave some flexibility in the execution on the execution side of things. Um, because there's something called self-determination theory. Um, I will not be able to fully explain it, but one of that aspect that makes, it describes happiness at work, right? Or in, in projects. Um, and one aspect of that is uh, ownership and mastery, right? And that that is super important to feel fulfilled at a job. And with that thinking, it's much better to give them a target and give people a, a framework to measure themselves against those targets, but leave room for execution and creativity. and. The beautiful thing is if you hire the right people, that also ties into hiring, obviously. But if you hire the right people, they will surprise you because they might completely kill their targets, right? They, they might go way beyond what you thought is possible just because you gave them the freedom to, to really do what, what they're good at and you trust them to execute on their own instincts. And you give them space to learn and to develop. That requires a safe space to make mistakes, but ultimately it creates a stronger culture, in my opinion. Yeah, and you talk about targets, and I've been uh, <laughs> dabbling in the world of KPIs and KRAs and whatever, but I'm by no means an expert on it, but it's something that I've actually talked about in the podcast previously, and something that I've put a real focus on in the past, past couple of quarters in our business, and 
it's it's done just what you've just described is but previously i hadn't put enough focus on the outcomes and i think a lot of that is the stage in business that i was probably at or where i was at in confidence levels and when you're just getting started um or when you're not 100 percent sure on the direction you really want to go it's much easier just to tell people to do xyz than to say you know have a go at this and, and see what happens and because there's a huge amount of trust that needs to go into that and especially when you're maybe relatively new to actually hiring people and i've been doing it for six years now so I've, i feel like i've i've you know, i've made a lot of mistakes and so i've learned that, you know actually overall things will probably get back on track even if the worst things happen and and i'm sort of more confident in just giving people a bit more um rope to so to speak and hopefully they're not going to hang themselves but um it does happen from time to time, unfortunately. Um, but I think the 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 key thing, and sorry, going back to my back to the point I was trying to make was with with giving people those targets. And I've just seen this in, in a few examples in my business. You say, look, for example, our podcast. Uh, I want you to focus on getting download, like increasing the downloads for our podcast. That's the target. I'm not saying to them, what I want you to do is to um, do this many posts or this many things or this many whatever. It's like just saying, look, that just go and figure out how to do it. Because I don't know. I'm not a podcast expert. and But you have the room and you have the space and the capacity to go and figure this stuff out or talk to someone that knows it or you know, find a good training course and just book yourself on it. I'll pay for it. You know, Go and figure this out because there's a goal that we need in our business. And and how you get there, I don't care. And And that is such a... It, it gives them, like you said about the, the enjoyment of work, uh, what people, how much they, how much they stick around in, in the career they're in as well is, is a factor of this. And if you, if you allow people to think and grow and do that themselves and off their own back, it's, they get so much ownership of the stuff they're doing that they, they just don't want to let it go. So the idea of them leaving to give over their baby, so to speak, to somebody else just isn't part of their, their mindset. And I've seen this when I talk to some of my staff about not about them leaving the company, but about moving them into different areas of the business. And you can see it's like, hold on a minute, but who's going to who's going to deal with that? I, I built that. Uh, and there's a huge amount of uh, yeah ownership and being protective about what they build. And I do still move them because it's good for culture to actually keep them growing. But, you know, it, I, I've seen it now and I've seen the evidence of that. So, yeah, I totally agree. I think it's um, KPIs is a brilliant thing to actually, or whatever you want to call them. It's just like giving people goals, not step-by-step guides for everything. Yeah. I, I think it, it allows for pride, right? If, if you have like this super strict guideline, how to do things, it's not really your work. You're just executing on someone else's idea. And it's hard to feel proud of like what, what you've achieved, right? But if you own it, you can feel pride that it will motivate you to grow further. So there's a lot of like ripple effects out of this um, that I think are super valuable. But I also have to say not everyone is the right person for that kind of leadership. And that's not a, it's not, not a value judgment. It's, it's great. Some people really prefer uh, that, that intense structure and clear guidelines. But within those, they operate perfectly. Right? The, the results are always on point. Everything is uh, always gets done. And there is like really a strong value in that. So I think it's important to also think about, okay, what position are we hiring for? What kind of job is that? And do we have a value and mindset fit for that position? Um, because yes, that loose approach, I love it, but I have a strong tendency for like an entrepreneurial approach, self-learning, I need that freedom, but not everyone does. Um, and I think it helps to be aware of that uh, and then to hire for the right the right person for the right job. I think that's very important. Yeah. I think also if you think about the, the core stuff that goes on in your business day to day, the stuff that bas- basically keeps it ticking over. Like it's great if that gets improved, but actually it's far worse if that gets broken in the process of trying to improve it. So there is this... I think you need to systemize to a level which allows your business to have the freedom to give people freedom, so to speak. And so once you've got your the, the, the core processes within your business down to a point where actually, like you said, you can get somebody who loves the structure, they love the rep- 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 repetition, sorry, uh, and they actually just really get their value or their value in themselves, their pride in themselves is how well they execute the instructions given to them. And that is, like you said, it's a 
there is a type of person like that and they're incredibly valuable in, in any business. And then the other side is what we're sort of talking about is actually, but beyond that, to have the big step up improvements in performance or to take your business into a totally new area, which you might not have known was, was possible, you need to then have that, that more forward thinking. But I think the, um, the challenge, I think, when a lot of the, the people listening to this podcast, maybe they're not at the stage in business where they feel they've got that confidence in their base systems yet. And so getting somebody in like that can be quite scary because they 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 can open up a can of worms and create quite a lot of work and come up with new ideas which need to be either either um, pursued or or put aside, so to speak. And a lot of decision making has to go on. And if you're still leading that, then you, you get dragged into all this stuff. So it can take time to allow people to do that because you don't want to give someone just infinite freedom that has to you know be in line with your company's visions and where you're actually going to go and and as the leader of your business then you know are the decisions and the things they're trying out are they actually moving you towards the goals you've agreed as a company so there needs to be that and so you need to be able to have the headspace and the time and the um and the energy to the energy to actually manage that person in doing it so they so you're working together towards that common goal and so I think that that's the probably the what's the change the most in my business over the past couple of years is, is me feeling I have you know the stuff just happens now I'm 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 happy with that okay what's next and and just now it's sort of getting exciting I think so yeah yeah I think if you're just starting out it's probably better to be more strict and have like a very specific SOP so someone who is also probably you're probably going to hire juniors right they probably don't have experience in the specific thing you want them to do so like clear guidelines are super important. And then you can over time loosen it and maybe hire more experienced people or they become more experienced to, to uh, allow a little bit more freedom. And it's, it's also probably better to start systemizing things that you know really well to free up your time. And that's kind of the e-myth approach, right? Like where you move away from being the technician to more manager and uh, like the different levels uh, that come later. Um, but it makes sense to start with what you know best but it's also the hardest thing to do because as a technician, you're usually more emotionally tied to like the, the results are more important to you because you have been always the one that has delivering results and you know how you want it. And so to, to take a step back and allow for like mistakes to happen, maybe it, it's not as perfect as, as you wanted it to be. That is, I think it's more a psychological effort than it is actually like, writing SOPs um, to, to really let go. But letting go is the most important thing in, in business if you want to step out of the day-to-day the -day and to accept maybe 80% quality. It's hard. It is very hard. But from my experience, everyone I've talked to, that is usually what holds people back the most, to really let go and allow the thing that is precious to them to be run by someone else who might not have the experience uh, you do. And that is, that's why, again, circling back to the systems, like see yourself as a system, that is a process that you might want to optimize, right? Um, being so tied to, to the results. Um, and it's, it's necessary um, when you level up your leadership skills in that sense. Yeah, I think that point of letting go I mean, it's one of the things that, that I mentioned before. We 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 help our clients with. That's one of the biggest challenges we help our clients with is is giving them the confidence to allow somebody else to exactly what you just said, make mistakes on the stuff that they know they can do like damn well, and and yet they know they can't continue doing it. And so I was that was me. Like I am a total control freak by nature. I'm like a micromanager. Uh, through and through if I allow myself to be and um, so the way that I overcame this and and so I had a huge trust issue with allowing trusting other people to do my work without as I said micromanaging them looking over their shoulder double checking everything I might as well have just done it myself because the amount of time it took me to manage and, and check it I could have literally done it myself and um, and so I spent a lot of time focusing on how can I create a system or a, a sop but it's beyond that so actually a whole system around the delegation of that work so i know and can very quickly assess 
has the work been done to a satisfactory level? You've got to let go a bit, like you said. You can't expect 100% or you can't expect in the beginning people to do it as quick as you sometimes. But sometimes you're surprised. And because you give someone a task and actually all, they, all they're focusing on is that thing, rather than you as a business owner when your head's all over the place and you're spinning you know, every plate you can and, and trying to you know, keep the whole thing afloat, you just say to somebody, look, just, just do that. Focus on that result there. You give them the, the guidance, the SOBs, whatever, and then you hand it over and suddenly they come back and do it quicker than you could, better than you could, come up with more ideas than you could because that's their world. And it's not distracted by all the thousands of other things going on in the business and the stresses and you know the payroll and whatever, you know, finding new clients and all that mess that you've got to deal with as a, as a business owner. And suddenly, you know, and I think when, when those things happen and you can't predict when they'll happen, but suddenly that gives you like an, a massive, massive boost in confidence in that, gosh, if that worked in that scenario, then I can now see, I believe that it's possible that actually I could get more and more of the stuff that I currently believe that only I can do or no one can do as good as me. I could actually get it, someone else to do it. And so I think that that for me is like when I can give people that confidence or that mindset shift it's like I can see it in their eyes during the coaching sessions and, and suddenly the light bulb goes on or like you know, the penny drops or whatever cliche phrase you're going to use. And it's like, ah, I get it. This is it. You know, <laughs> but powerful. That, that moment is, I think it's the most freeing moment you can have in, in business. Once you realize that you just, it, it's, you create leverage in that moment and you, you can see like, to me, it was like, I could see the, the, the freedom at the end, the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Because I was so stuck in business in the beginning. It's like, oh, oh my God, there, there is, life can be different. And I think that's, that's super empowering. I, I had two thoughts on, on what you said. And one is, I, I think I, I learned that from like Warren Buffett reading his books. It's like mainly it's business is more about protecting the downside. So preventing catastrophic failure. It's not about doing everything perfectly, but stopping like the, the team or the, the company going downhill in a catastrophic way, right? And that you can, for that, SOPs are great. Um, just to make sure and like having the right KPIs and, and metrics in, in place to, so you always know, are we failing here in a way that could be catastrophic for the company, right? As long as that doesn't happen, usually you can recover. And then mistakes are not an issue. Um, usually on the other side, there's a human being, you can talk to that person, they will understand, you will be able to fix it. Um, I think that's, that's super important. And the other thing I, I, that, you, that you mentioned, I think is super important is coaching, get help. All right? it's like, that's why I admire what you're doing. I think it's super important to, to have someone who helps you through that process. Uh, my co-founder and I, we're both like really into therapy and, and coaching ourselves. We have coaches for different parts of the, the company, but we have also therapists to work us through like our internal systems, right? To, to understand, okay, where's our ego blocking us from, from doing the necessary things. So just building yourself a system that helps you to work on, on these questions and to, to also inspire you to take the next step and show you what's possible. I think that's, that's super important. That's why coaching I think is, is very important, but anything that helps you, it can be a mastermind group, um, a co-working group, um, just like-minded people, but it can be something more structured as like a therapist or a coach, um, whatever works for you. It can also be a book, to be honest. Um, you just have to find your tool that gets the job done. So on that point regarding the, I mean, you use the word therapy for it, which is um, it's probably a, a more Americanized phrase, I guess, than uh, in the UK. But I think that the... Um, I think what you're you're saying, and it's quite interesting I want to pick up on, because I know some of my my mentors over the years have, have talked a lot about their mentors, that they, they, whether they call it the mindset coach or um, it's not about the business. It's about the, the the internal system. Like you said, it's about giving yourself the, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Allowing yourself to be successful. It's about understanding why you're not, I think you'll use the words why you're preventing yourself on not doing the things you should be doing. And when did you start looking that more seriously? Because I think it's something that at hands up, I think I could probably do more of it. I mean, I've read quite a lot of books on it and, and um, people like Dr. Martini is one of the ones that, that the values factor and stuff like that, which I think was very, very useful. 
understanding your own value to the world and 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 actually believing you you are worthy of being successful um i think there's a real challenges for a lot of us entrepreneurs is actually when when and i see i've seen it in myself it's sort of it's almost like um what's the word i'm looking for like uh not self-destruct that's the wrong word but you you almost like you, you steer away from the success because of the fear of having it. And I think you talked about this, maybe it's before we came on, came on camera. Um, it was more, you talked about like the why of, of what's next after the systems. So you, you build the systems to create the business, but then what's next. And it's, it's all sort of linked in. It's like, it's believing there is a, an opportunity or a life out for you in the head that is far great or different, different, maybe not great, but very different from the one you have now. And allowing yourself actually the opportunity to just keep pursuing that. And I think that's something that that we could all probably, well, not we all, many of us, I should say, can could probably do more of and better of. Yeah. I I use the word therapy because it's I first of all, I, I think it's highly stigmatized still, especially in, in Germany. I don't know about the UK. It's definitely better in, in the US. Um but the way I see it is just a gym for your mental health and the, the way you think about yourself, right? And we we totally accept coaches and, and trainers. Um, like Michael Jordan had a bunch of coaches to help him with everything, right? Uh, throwing the ball, whatever, right? Running, everything. Why don't we do that for um, like the most important muscle we use every day, especially in business, which is our brain, right? Um, and I think for that, it's, it's very important and it's very dear to me to destigmatize it because there's a lot of leverage that can be unleashed if you take a good look at yourself and why you think about things in a certain way. And oftentimes it, everyone has unhelpful patterns, let's say. There's not a single person who gets away from childhood without any unhelpful patterns, right? It's, it's just there and having acknowledging that um, and then working on it is to me the same as like acknowledging that, okay, I want to gain some muscle. I want to lose some weight. Okay, I'll get a trainer to uh, to help me to get there or I go to the gym or whatever uh, your system is. So I, I, I try to take a quite an agnostic and a distant uh, approach to this and, and, and not judge the tool because to me in the end, it's really just a tool. Um, but to, to go back to the question that you asked when it started for me, and that was probably three years ago. Um, and I was in, a, in an inter interesting position because I had achieved a bunch of mainly financial and business goals um, that I always had in mind. Okay, that's where I want to get to and then life will be good. And then I got there and it's like, weirdly enough, it's not that different and I'm not that happy. And the reason why then I started coaching and therapy was to to. Because it's, I think it's Einstein's quote, you, you cannot solve problems with, uh, with the same thinking that started them, right? Or that caused the problem. So I understood, okay, my thinking obviously is somewhere wrong. I don't know what exactly is wrong, but it doesn't, it doesn't help me to achieve the goal. Or maybe I've picked the wrong goal. And that kind of started the, the journey of like, yeah, looking at my own systems, understanding what I was optimizing for. Um, and then slowly changing that. And it's, a, it's an ongoing process. I'm not really sure if it, if it will ever be done, um, but it's, it's probably the most rewarding process. Um, and to some, it might sound really woo, -woo um, but the awareness you get about like what really drives you and, and then having the optionality again to, to react to that and change things is, in my opinion, those are the building blocks of building a, a great life. Um, and yeah, um, I think it goes back to what I said in the beginning. I optimized for pain. Um, I like my self-worth was highly tied to competence. So I wanted to be the competent person in the room, which then has ripple effects that I don't allow other people to be more competent. So I will stop myself from learning uh, because I don't surround myself with really smart people. Um, so there's a lot of ripple effects and um, that, that stop me from growing. Uh, and that's what I'm consciously trying to work on. Um, not saying you can take what I've learned and just copy it. I think everyone has their own journey, but the, the tool of like working on yourself, becoming aware of your own patterns is ultimately the, the fundamental approach to, to a happier life. That's, that's my strong belief these days. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm 
I think this subject is something that it's becoming more acceptable in business, but it's still, like you say, very stigmatized and definitely in the UK. I mean, I've been through medicine as as a doctor, a trained doctor and worked in in hospitals and worked in psychiatry, in fact, in, in, in hospital as well. And so I've seen the extreme side of stuff, but it's also I've seen just the general, the reluctance of people to get help. And I think one, one, the other thing that people often think about is that you you get therapy or you get help when you are depressed or you need it because you are you know in a down patch, whatever that is, whatever label that we're talking about here. But actually, quite the opposite is true. And I think I can't remember who who quote who, who said this, but I. Um, I heard a quote recently by somebody and they're saying mental health is not the ability to avoid getting depressed. It's the ability to cope with it when you are. And it's the same as training for, you know, physical health. You know, if you wait until you are, you know, hugely overweight and you've got angina, you know, heart pain and you, you're struggling to walk and that's the moment you decide to do something about it. It's a huge, huge uphill battle. Whereas if you stay, you know, relatively healthy your entire life, then when you know things happen, whatever you can recover. You break your leg three months later, you can actually get back and do stuff again. And 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 that idea about being able to cope with the ups and downs that business throws at you like nothing else. You know, I think the most business running a business is hard. Like it's it's emotionally draining, uh, you know, at best, <laughs> and can be you know completely uh you know can you can just the, your will can be pulled from under you in, in a second almost and and sometimes sort of without even seeing it coming and um being able to cope with that and to ride that through is what makes the difference to many successful businesses or not and that comes from being strong mentally as it does about having strong business skills so i'm you know completely you know i'm really glad you brought this up as a subject and i'm it's something that i'm very very interested in promoting because i think it's so so important to to understand that like you like the analogy you said your, your brain is it's just a muscle it's just a, a part of your body that you need help with to be able to improve it in the same way if you wanted to run a marathon for the first time or become a kickboxing champion or whatever it is you're not going to just try it, do it all by yourself you're gonna no. even if it's just seeking out help on youtube you're gonna do something to get a little bit of a edge on it rather than just you know just thinking about it and just totally doing it alone. That's not what we do as people, but we do often when it comes to the to our mind and to to being strong and be able to to cope with stuff. So yeah, very yeah. interesting topic. I think it's it's very important what you said to re reiterate that it's it's preventative, right? You yeah. you it, it's not that you're depressed and that's why you need. I mean, that that is might be the case. Then by all means, it's really important to get help. But even if you're not in a in a bad place, it's it's like the gym, and I think that's a good mental model to to think about. And it it can help you with really tactical stuff like price increases. How hard it is to, is it to increase prices? And it's like, oh, you have imposter syndrome, you have doubts. Like really understanding that, just going through that process with someone who can mirror back your your own thought patterns, that might be a million dollar investment, right? Or results just because you, you get through it and you do it. And then two years later, you made real money from that decision that you might have not um, made if you, yeah, well, you can get stuck in your own, in your own mind and you can talk yourself out of things. And the smarter you are, the better you are at talking yourself out of things. Uh, that's really dangerous. So someone, and I might curse here a little bit, someone, you need someone who calls out your bullshit. And just holds up a mirror and says, look at this. Do you really think that's the case? And I'm like, oh, okay, maybe, maybe not, right? That is important. And oftentimes, especially as solopreneurs, we don't have that person um, because friends like you or they might not care enough, so they don't want to don't hurt you. It's very hard to find someone who doesn't really care, but is still there for an hour to listen to whatever you have to say and then say, well, think about this. And, that is really helpful. So, um, yeah, it's like before you think about other systems, think about that system because that is the biggest leverage of everything um, I've I've tried so far, in my opinion. Yeah, um, one of, one of the things that I've done for years now, and actually, I started off as a group of, of clients who I did a, a mastermind for. Um, didn't I, I charged a nominal amount, but it wasn't a money making thing by any means. But I did charge something, 
And at some point, I made the decision to stop charging anything and to then become an equal in that group rather than being the leader of the group. Okay, it's on my Zoom account or whatever, but um, if I don't turn up, the gang still turn up and do their thing. You know, it's just I it just it's just because I started it, that's all. And I've kept that going over the years because of exactly that. It, it is that now I've got an opportunity. Like this morning, it's every Thursday morning, I arrived and uh, and we don't we didn't have an agenda. We sometimes have an agenda. We sometimes talk about specific things like marketing or sales or whatever. There's no agenda today. And I literally had it before I came on. I had a uh, and I was struggling over writing this email about getting this format right for this email. And it sounds like a silly thing, but like when you're a solopreneur or an, on, an entrepreneur, and you, you don't have any anyone else in your board, so to speak, at that level. Sometimes you just need somebody who knows a bit about your business, who has no vested interest in it. You're not paying them. They're not paying you, but somebody you can just you know openly share and not feel guilty for it because you know you'll reciprocate at some point in the future because they're also a business owner. And that to me has been incredibly cathartic. That is at the moment, that is my weekly therapy. So be able to not only ask for help or to get advice but also to give because that's also very therapeutic and you, you learn and grow as well by by hearing other people's challenges because often we have the same ones we just almost like you hear yourself in them when they speak it and then you give advice and it's basically coaching yourself uh, when you give advice so I think that's for me one of the things that anyone can do it doesn't require money it doesn't require contacts other than other people in the world who are in a similar stage to business that you and just that you happen to, for some reason, have a connection with, or you just reach out and ask people, like, do you want to do this? Do you want to hook up? And some people will come and go, and you find, you know, a core group that stick around. So if for anything else, you know, I think I've talked about this before, actually, on the podcast, but uh, if you do nothing else, if you don't go and actually actively find, you know, paid for therapy or, or you know, mindset coach or whatever it is, it doesn't need to be that formal. You can still get huge benefits from from just actually doing something like that and having that opportunity, like you said, to someone to, to share with. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, I met my co-founder through Facebook oh. on a Facebook, like he lives in Kansas city. I live in Berlin, right? We, we never met, but we started the business because for a year or so we hung out on Facebook and a marketing group and just geeked out on stuff and just helped each other with like challenges. And that's how we learned, okay, we can actually run a business together because we have different complementary skills uh, and a very similar approach to, to business and life in general. And you never know that what might happen, right? It's like, but what you want to do is increase the surface area of luck, right? Just by going out there and, and exposing yourself to the right people and looking for the right people for your immediate benefit, but also for potential future uh, benefit that you don't might not even know about. Um, and I like, I like to think about these things more in terms of like the, the opportunity cost of doing nothing, right? What, and that, that's very hard to quantify. And that's why like therapy or coaching is oftentimes a little bit hard to sell because you cannot guarantee a certain outcome. But I like to think about, I think all of us had, have made a decision in life that it would like to take back and some help from the outside would have helped to make maybe make a better choice in that situation, right? And then if you find that moment in time, think about the opportunity cost. How would have life been different um, if you had made a better choice? That is what you can get out of like having an environment that stimulates you, that helps you to reflect and uh, helps you grow. Um, so yeah, I can just recommend to go out there and find your find your tribe um, that supports you. Um, and that can be in any any form, coach, therapist, but can also be a Facebook group. That worked for me. Cool. Sebastian, we could talk for hours. I, I do not doubt. But I'm going to have to wrap this one up because I actually uh, have to uh, do a live podcast imminently. <laughs> And uh, and so I want to ask you a couple of questions, if I may, before we before finish. I ask everybody these things. And so first off, is this a quick, a quick and simple one? Just give us a couple, two or three of your favorite apps, plugins, or tools that you like to you know make your life happier or better. Yeah, I love Make Make dot com. Used to be in Techromat. It's like Zapier, but you can. It's, it's a bit more complex. I'm a techie. I love to connect different apps and create some magic. Um, that is what I usually use. Uh, we run on Airtable, which is a great piece of software. You can 
do anything, build a CRM with it, a spreadsheet, right? Super flexible. Um, yeah, I think those are the most most important tools that I use on a daily basis. Okay. I, I know Integromat well, but I, I've and I've heard of Airtable, but I've never put any thought to it. So I'm going to go and check it out. I'll, I'll take your word that it's worth the, worth my time to check it out. I run the whole company on Airtable. Really. Uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So does it do task management as well? It does task management, accounting, like everything really. But you have to tailor it. It's like, yeah, yeah it's you like have a to blank, mold it to. Blank sheet, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, I like that sort of thing. I'll go and have a look at a little uh, play. Okay, cool. Um, who else do you think would be a, a great guest on this podcast? It's a good question. I'm not a networker, funnily enough. Um, I think I have a friend, Andrew Stevens, who runs Internet Marketing Gold, um, who would be super interesting. He has done, he runs three companies. He's done a lot of interesting stuff and he's a super interesting guy to talk to. Not really sure if he's into podcasts, but I love talking to him. He is always inspiring. Well, if you, if you be kind enough to make an introduction, we'll find out. I'll ping him. (laughs) Cool. Thank you. Um, the title of this podcast is Systemize Your Success, but what does success mean to you? Yeah, I think I answered that question because we, we talked about this in the beginning, but uh, to reiterate, it's it's having self-awareness and knowing what you want and then the options to do that and follow up with uh, with what you want and not being locked in in a way that restricts your growth. Um, but being connected and having constraints that, uh, that you can live with. Uh, ultimate freedom is not the way to go, for me at least. Um, so understand the pain you can live with and then choose that and optimize the rest of the freedom around that. Cool. And lastly, do you believe you can systemize your success? Yeah. I mean, I, I strongly believe in systems. I, I think everything is a system. Um, We talked a lot about work, um, but I, there's this wheel of life and which has the different areas of, uh, of life, finances, friends, relationships. I think everything can be systemized. Um, for instance, success in health. I hired a personal trainer just to kick my butt, to be honest, because otherwise I wouldn't do it, but I know it's important. That's my system of success in that realm with friends. I created a, an open calendar where everyone can put their, their um, important events in and that creates opportunities to, to meet more often, right? Because my definition of success in, in my social circle is I see my friends at least once a week. So I need to build systems around that uh, to facilitate it because everyone is busy. Um, so I think, yes, you can find systems for every part of your life. Um, and then I find it very helpful to think about it that way. And then sometimes magic just happens. And that's quite nice because you don't have to think about everything. Uh, it just happens. Cool. I, uh, I really like that idea, having a, a shared calendar with your mates. I got a very big extended family, so I think we need to do one for that as well, because otherwise it's 10 million WhatsApps coming backwards and forwards every week. So, yeah, yeah okay, cool. All right, awesome. Thank you so much. If, if people want to reach out and find out more about you, how can they find you? What's the best way to get in contact? Um, yeah, so if you want to learn more about uh, my company, go to dofollow.io. Um, if you're interested in, in link building or want to learn more about it, um, you can find me on Twitter um, at Zepp Sheffer. Um, probably put that in the show notes. Yeah. Um, or LinkedIn, same name. Um, you can put a link in the, uh, in the show notes. Yeah. Um, I'm not super active on Twitter, but you can always ping me if you have questions. Cool. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. I'm very, yeah, very likewise. glad you came on. Uh, I've, uh, actually, as we said before, I didn't know what we would, we would talk about today. There was no real plan, and uh, I think that was a that was a good good uh, plan to have. Was to have no plan because this has been really fascinating, interesting, and inspiring. So thank you very much. Yeah, I really enjoyed the conversation. Thank you. Cool. Thank you.